welcome to our harvest service. It's very different today, obviously, um, but I do thank the, the, the um, decorators for the you know, seasonally appropriate things that we have about, and we particularly like that one. I thought at first it was meant to be a scarecrow, but I don't think it is, is it? It's just when I first came in, you know. Pardon? <laughs> you thought it was totally boring? Oh, no, I love it. I think it's really... Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's right. I, I realised that Jenny must have made it when she said she thought it was totally boring. <laughs> um, this morning, it's communion. And for those who were here last month, it will be much the same in that we only receive um, bread. And I will be doing a um, choreographed dance between sanitizing, masking, and everything else at the right times. Um, I will not say anything, when I I'll, and I will come round with the bread. Um, if you wish to receive, and I know for various reasons different people don't want to receive communion, but for those who do, if you hold your hands right out in front so I don't have to get too close, and then I can drop the wafer into your hand, and I, I will, will come round. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to say about that when we get to that point later on in the service. It's quite hard thinking about harvest at the moment, and well, it always is really, because it's trying to get that balance between giving thanks to God for all that he has given to us, which is what harvest thanksgiving is about, but we're also presented with these huge needs around the world and in our own community which actually makes us quite sad and reflective. And as I was sort of thinking about these two aspects, I was trying to, trying to get that balance within the service. So I've decided that we're going to do the first bit is going to be our time of thanksgiving to God for all that he's given to us. Um, and then we'll come on to the um, looking at the harvest appeals that are going on this year and what, what we're doing and what we're asking people to do about that. And that's when we'll come into our time of confession and teaching. So as we think um, about this amazing world that God has given to us, I think one of the benefits of lockdown has been the way many people have engaged with the natural world more. Right at the beginning, when we were told we could only go out for a walk uh, once a day, many people discovered the beauty of the local area that they'd never seen before. I heard of somebody who, I'm not sure whether they lived on Western Drive or had often walked along Western Drive, who didn't know that the River Lostock was just behind those houses. Similarly, where we live, which is sort of, we're not on the Oaks, but where we live sort of backs onto the Oaks, uh, and there's a beautiful feel, um, woods and things at the bottom there. And I met somebody who'd been living on the Oaks for a couple of years and never knew that these woods were there five minutes walk, less than five minutes walk from their home. So, you know, that's been one of the things that's been really good about um, the lockdown. And we, like many others, have done a lot more in the garden. We have grown, forgive me, Tom, if I've forgotten anything, we've grown potatoes, tomatoes, lettuces, onions peas and flowers and there is something so satisfying about growing and eating your own food there's nothing better is there than than that picking a tomato and eating it straight away and digging up the potatoes has been like digging for gold you know oh there's another one you know it, it's a really special and those all those people concerned about mental health will tell you that the benefits of being outdoors are huge I just looked up one thing on the internet and it just said that being outdoors can improve your mood, it reduces stress and anger, it helps you feel more relaxed, it improves your physical health, your confidence, your self-esteem, it helps you to be more active and make new connections and do different things. But, what, but the, the scientists have said that for a long while and there are certain um, health professionals who will actually prescribe going outdoors and doing walks because it's so good for your mental health. But as Christians, none of this should come as a surprise because it was part of God's plan from the beginning. We read in Genesis 2, God made trees that were pleasing to the eye as well as for food. 
He designed it like that, that it would be pleasing on the eye. I remember when I was at high school, it's a long while ago, um, and green blackboards came in because the scientists had discovered that green was more relaxing on the eyes than black. And if you look around the world, what well, you think? Well, it's obvious really, isn't it? I mean, you know, the most of the stuff that God made was green, a lot of it, because he knew that that was what was right for us. And so that just sort of made me think that, you know, how much, and we do know that God has designed this world well, but it was just that one little bit that really struck me, made trees that were pleasing to the eye as well as good for food. And so it's in that spirit that we come to give thanks to God for all that he has given to us. And so we're going to um, say some responses. um, And the response after each sentence is, we give you thanks, O Lord. I think we'll stand to do this. It feels better to, to praise God if we're standing, seeing as we don't stand to sing anymore. So for earth and sea and sky, in the harmony of colour, we give you thanks, O Lord. For the air of the eternal seeping through the physical, we give you thanks, O Lord. For the everlasting glory dipping into time, we give you thanks, O Lord. For nature resplendent, growing beast, emergent crops, singing birds, the energies of the city. We give you thanks, O Lord. For the person you sent to restore us when we fell away from the goodness of your creation, we give you thanks, O Lord. For harmony, restored through his spirit, moving upon the turbulent waters of our lives, we give you thanks, O Lord. For the honour you give us of lives flowing in the rhythm of your tides, we give you thanks, O Lord. For setting each of us like the stars upon their courses within the orbit of your love, we give you thanks, O Lord. And now we're going to listen to a song that picks up on that. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
praises before him. Praise to the Lord, oh, let all that is in me adore him. Who oh, that has life and breath, come now with praises before him. Let the amen sound from his people again. Gladly because we adore So we move on to the harvest appeal for this year and we've got sort of three strands to it really. There was, um, we've asked people to, uh, to give stuff to the food bank because obviously the need in this area is still uh, even more so, hugely great. Um, so there's some boxes at the back um, for people who brought stuff today, but it's not too late if you want to bring it. We'll not do anything with them until after next Sunday. So if you want to bring some things for the food bank uh, next week that would be great for those who are watching online if you want to donate to that if you contact either Andy or myself then um, we will arrange to have it picked up for you and brought down here so that we can give that to the food bank um, the other uh, harvest appeal that we're looking at is the bishop's harvest appeal and he has uh, the bishop has um, put together two uh, charities to support this year. One is Tear Fund and one is a, a charity working in Gaza with huge needs. Um, I know Andy has sent out the details about these on the letters that he sent out and they're urging people really to donate online if they can but if you can't then again in an envelope and marked it can go in our normal collection um, so that we can do that. I know not everybody's happy or conversant with doing stuff online with giving money again that will be available for the next couple of weeks and again contact us if you want us to be able to pick that up for you um, I've put I don't think I've said this I've put the information about those two charities up on the notice board as you come in just past the hand sanitizer and um, you can just read there a little bit about what the work is but I've found um, the video of the work that they want us to support in Ethiopia and so we're going to watch this um, video now of the work that they're doing that they want us to support. Your neighbour is thirsty but there is a solution and there is hope. For many people in the north of Ethiopia the impact of climate change is devastating. They used to expect rain up to four months a year, but now it only falls in August. People don't have enough water to survive. It is an issue of life or death. And for families like Orbisa's, everyday life is a real struggle. My name is Orbisa and I have nine children. Life is very challenging here. We have no food and are dependent on our livestock for our livelihood. Whenever there is no rainfall, our animals die as there is no grass or water. This affects our lives significantly. We will not get money or have milk to drink. We have no other option. When it rains, I only need to walk five minutes to collect water, but these water sources are now dry. Every night, I walk for 10 hours to collect water from a lake. The walk is dangerous. I can face wild animals, such as hyenas and leopards. The water I collect is not sufficient. I am only able to collect less than half of what my family needs each day. We need most of it for drinking, but sometimes it is not enough, and my family has to go to bed thirsty. I feel extremely sad whenever I cannot provide water for my children. It hasn't rained for six months, and I don't know when it will rain next. It is God who knows when the rainfall will come. I worry about my children and my family. I worry about the small livestock which are remaining. I feel worried whenever I think about the future. If we could get water access in our village, this would change things for me. 
This is the first and most important thing that would give me hope. Orbisa's story is sadly all too common. Forced to find any kind of water, more people are getting sick and their livestock, their only source of income, are dying due to lack of water. Because of climate change, the area has become even more dry and arid, like a desert. People are suffering and many are giving up hope. But there is good news. Tear Fund is changing lives by working with local partners to set up solar powered wells that will provide clean water closer to communities. This will help to restore hope and give new life for all who live there. In the last 10 years, droughts are increasing from year to year. Availability of water is very, very difficult. Tear Fund has started now working with FSA, saving lives by creating access to potable water, drilling boreholes and developing water supply systems. The greatest joy and happiness we could see in communities is when they get water. Lives are being changed and they are seeing the love of Jesus. When we provide water for these communities, we are changing the lives of the coming generations too. The young people, the children, their lives will change definitely when we provide water for them. Please donate now. I found that story quite unbelievable. When I first read it, I thought I'd read a mistake when it said that she gets up in the middle of the night to walk for 10 hours to get water. Yeah, that's my reaction, Pat. Just, I can't begin to imagine. To walk one hour to get water, to walk 10 minutes to get the water I need would be horrendous. But 10 hours at night, just, you just can't begin to imagine what that must be like. And yet that joy at the end that we can provide. And I've, I've forgotten that, but I think it was 12 pounds will help to bring that solar powered water to that village. And, you know, for us, £12, it's, it's not a vast amount of money, and yet it will make so much difference. And there is so much that we can do. So I hope that story will stay with you as it has with me and really challenged me in what I can do. And we know that there's all sorts of situations around the world like that, and very often we just sort of switch off, don't we? because we've sort of got compassion fatigue, I think is the official word. And yet a short video like that really, really brings it home. And we know, we know that we let these things happen and we could do and we don't do things. And so we'll just be quiet for a moment before we come to our time of confession. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer. This is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. And the collect for Harvest Sunday. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to have the Bible reading. Chrissy Gines has done it for us this week. And we've got sort of three little chunks. So I said to her, don't try saying where everything's coming from. So there's um, a bit from Genesis 1, a bit from Genesis 2, and a bit from Genesis 3. So they're all little snippets that I will try and put together in a moment. So here's our Bible reading. The reading for today starts at Genesis Chapter 1, verse 29. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. To Adam he said... Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it. All the days of your life it will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Quite a stark picture that, isn't it? You know, the toil, the sweat of your brow, you will get your food. And we often wrongly believe that work is the result of the fall and sin. That in an ideal paradise, which is what Eden actually means, paradise, food would just drop into our hands. But that is not true. Because a a verse that we didn't have in there, in Genesis 2, we read that God put man in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. God needed man's cooperation and woman's. It was part of his plan that he invites us to share in his work. There is something lovely about watching a child with their parent doing a job together. When we were down with our daughter and granddaughters um, in the summer, we decided, the girls and I, they're six and nine, get this right, yes, six and nine, that we would make a special meal for mummy and daddy. So we set to and we made the menu and we made the shopping list and we did all the work together and you sort of supervise them peeling the potatoes and chopping the carrots and you give them a sharp knife with your pout in your mouth and all that sort of stuff. But it was a really special afternoon. I was exhausted at the end of it. It would have been much easier to cook the meal myself and just produce it But doing it with them was just a special time uh, and one that obviously I've remembered and them too because it's something that you do together. And that's what God wanted. He wanted us to have that sense of ownership and pride which you just don't get when everything is handed on you on a plate. Once again, we see God knew what he was doing. But lest that we think that it is all our own doing, It's important to remember that within this shared work, we are still dependent on God. Because only he can send the rain and the sun and all the other conditions which are needed to make plants 
as well as us, flourish. Earlier in the year, when we had that amazing weather and we were trying to grow all these things, it was quite a chore every evening. Tom would go out and do the watering. And you're out there for quite a long time and actually you think, what I'm putting on the ground here, if it had rained, would have happened in about five minutes. You know, you're not actually giving the plants very much water, but you're doing your bit. God is so generous And some of the very first words that we had in that reading from chapter 1, verse 29, he said to Adam and Eve, I give you every seed-bearing plant for food. I give it to you. He is a generous God. And it all sounds idyllic. And of course it is, because this is what God had created at the start, this Eden, this paradise a place of bliss and delight. So what went wrong? Why have we seen those harrowing pictures from Ethiopia? Why do we need to provide for that food bank in our locality? Why is it that people haven't got enough to eat? And it all comes down to sin. God told Adam and Eve what they should do so that they could share ownership with him. But they were tempted by the devil to take control themselves. And that, that's really what sin is in a nutshell. That inner desire to be self-sufficient, to decide for ourselves and not trust the God who made us and knows what is best for us. And that's why we get those dreadful words through painful toil you will eat of it. There will be thorns and thistles. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food. But even here, we see God's provision. Yes, there is judgment, because we would have to work long and hard. But there is also grace, because he would, we would still be able to produce the food that would sustain our lives. God doesn't just abandon us. He goes on providing. And just as at the start, there was always meant to be cooperation between God and humans. Remember those words, take care of the world. So there is still that today. We see the way that humans are making this planet an awful place for many people to live. And it's through thoughtlessness, through thoughtless use of the resources we have. And so for those of us who can hear God speaking, we hear those words, take care of the world. And that means practical actions on our part. Trying maybe to do something to reduce our carbon footprint, to make sure we do all we can for recycling. But also to care for the people that God created. And that's why, as I said at the beginning, our harvest celebration is that mixture of thanking God for his generous provision, but also that commitment on our part to care for his creation and those he created. That's why we're urging people to give to the food bank for local needs to give money to help those further afield with the very basics of life. There is nothing more basic to life than water. But I just want to pick up on that idea of God's judgment and grace in the Garden of Eden because it's a theme that recurs throughout the Bible and reaches its climax in the life and death of Jesus. And then when we get to the end of the Bible, the book of Revelation, which is St. John's spirit-inspired vision of what life will be like in eternity, we find words like these. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. That ring bells from the very beginning of the Bible? Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. 
on each side of the river stood the tree of life. No longer will there be any curse. So here we see that for those of us who believe and trust in God's grace, that paradise, which was God's original plan, will be fulfilled. That is the hope that we have for the future. But in the meantime, we need to hear God's words. God put man in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And despite the many ways that we try as individuals and as nations and powers try to be in control rather than depending on God, he in his love and his grace calls us and equips us to share in that task. As we come to communion today and we remember the death of Jesus We remember God's grace in making a way possible for us through the blood of Jesus so that we can share in that eternal paradise and fulfill that God's original plan for mankind. That is the promise. That is the challenge of harvest. So now we remember and declare together our faith in that God. So let's stand to declare our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now our prayers are going to be read by Mary, um, but I know that they are a joint effort by all the members of the cell group. She's just reading them on their behalf. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you at this harvest time for your creation and the good gifts you give to us. We particularly think of those who work on land and sea to provide our daily food. We remember our farmers and fishermen and those in other parts of the world who have planted seed and tended crops and the fruits of whose labours we enjoy. We pray for governments and aid agencies throughout the world and to those areas where there is disaster drought and starvation. Touch our hearts, Lord, and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your gifts. We also pray at this time for the Bishop's Harvest Appeal, giving to friends of the Holy Land and Tear Fund. May people give generously. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church worldwide and also our own churches here in Leyland. We thank you that we are still able to meet and also that technology enables those who are unable to attend to be part of the fellowship. We pray for all those Christians who cannot meet for fear of persecution and imprisonment and that they will know your love and peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord of the universe, we praise you for your creation, for the wonder of space, the beauty of the world, and the blessings of Earth's resources. 
Keep us from spoiling your gifts by our selfishness and help us to use them for the good of all people and the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, we pray for the people of our community, where young and old are anxious, deprived of the usual routines of life and fearful of the future. May they know your concern over every detail of their lives. We give thanks for the local groups who continue to provide food for individuals and families. We pray especially for those running food banks, for wisdom and clarity in decision making that results in good support for people in crisis. Amen. Our Lord, our God, we pray for all people who are sick, those caught up with the new wave of COVID-19. Help them, Lord, to get over it quickly and not to have to go into hospital. We pray for those waiting for appointments, operations and test results. We pray especially for those we know and love. Take away all their fears and anxieties. Help them to know that you are close to them and love them. We ask this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfil your wise and loving purpose in us and in all for whom we pray, that with them and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed and the whole earth give praise to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. You send your spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. 
Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share one bread. And so we say the prayer of thanks together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May the blessing of the God who cycles the seasons and swells the grain go with us. May the blessing of the Son who harvests and kneads and breaks the bread go with us. May the blessing of the Spirit who challenges us to a just sharing of earth's harvest go with us now and into the week ahead. Amen. Amen.